At the beginning of 2022, China announced that it would build a nuclear power plant in Argentina using China's most advanced Huolong-1 reactor. Once completed, it will increase Argentina's nuclear power generation capacity by more than 60% and provide over 7,000 job opportunities during peak construction periods. Upon completion, it will require 700 permanent job positions. So, why did Argentina choose China's Huolong-1 technology? Let's take a look at its advantages. Besides, is nuclear power plant safe? Why are Western countries decommissioning nuclear power plants while China is vigorously expanding them? Today, we will discuss the mystery of nuclear power plants and the rise of the Huolong-1 technology. Okay, let's take a look. Nuclear energy is one of the most promising future energy sources for mankind. The application and development level of it is the embodiment of a country's comprehensive industrial strength. From 1954 to the completion of the Obninsk nuclear power plant in the Soviet Union, the global application of nuclear power has gone through 67 years. On December 15, 1991, China's first nuclear power plant, the Qinshan Nuclear Power Plant, was powered on, making China the seventh country in the world capable of building nuclear power plants. On January 30, 2021, the third-generation nuclear power technology independently developed by China and the world's first Huolong-1 nuclear power unit was put into commercial operation. Moreover, in 2022, it passed the British GDA certification and reached a cooperation with Argentina, which marks the beginning of China's independent nuclear power technology to the world. As what we have said, nuclear energy is one of the most promising future energy sources for mankind. For a populous country like China, nuclear energy is definitely one of the most worthy forms of energy to develop. Therefore, although some Western countries are currently opposed to nuclear power, China has not blindly followed suit, but will continue to develop nuclear industrial technologies such as Huolong-1. When the Huolong-1 first appeared in the public eye, Many people said that it was a technology imported by China from abroad, but it's not true. The design basis of Huolong-1 is the Qinshan nuclear power plant, and the technology of the Qinshan nuclear power unit originated from the hard years of China's development of nuclear submarine power reactors. Therefore, to know where the Huolong-1 came from, we must know how the nuclear submarine came. In In June 1958, President Mao approved the report on the independent research and development of nuclear submarines. Under the strict technical blockade of various countries, in September 1959, China asked help for Volbyov, the leader of the Soviet expert team, and learned from him about the situation of the American nuclear submarine and the possible problems of the reactor, which became a valuable experience for the R&D team. As the China's economic situation was not good in 1961, the nuclear submarine project was forced to be interrupted, and China could only insist on developing the atomic bomb first. On October 16, 1964, China's first atomic bomb exploded successfully. Research and development of nuclear submarines also resumed the following year. Experts from the Nuclear Power Institute were dispatched to a mountainous area in Nijiang, Sichuan which is the famous 909 base. The newly established 909 base has nothing, and the researchers can only live in the homes of local villagers. In the years of difficult living conditions, more than 200 technical experts work tirelessly to build a sophisticated nuclear submarine land-based model reactor. The structure of this mode stack is extremely complex, consisting of more than 29,000 instruments, pipes, and valves, and it may be paralyzed without a related technician. In 1967, the most worrying thing happened, many experts were involved in the political whirlpool, and the whole project was affected. Fortunately, a few months later, China's first special official letter was issued, and the factory director, scientists, and engineers were able to continue their work. In the years of hard research and development, Li Yichuan, an engineer who has participated in the design of submarine nuclear power since 1959, is the most representative figure. 
Before the reactor was installed, he had a kidney removed from overwork. Everyone persuaded him to go back to rest, but he still worked while sick, and even brought the quilt to the duty room, where he ate and worked together until the reactor was successfully opened. After years of painstaking research, the reactor was finally opened in 1970. However, the startup process was not smooth. From the start of the reactor in the early morning of July 17 to the full power on August 30, there have been ups and downs in the middle, there was a story that everyone will never forget. During the emergency repair process caused by flash floods, technician Zhu Xinyin found that some pores of uneven size appeared on the welding surface. It is necessary to eliminate the accumulated water inside, but because the tube wall is narrow, not smooth, and cannot be hit by metal, it has to be absorbed little by little with a silk scarf. If the failure is not dealt with in time, perhaps the previous work will be destroyed. Just when people were in panic, Zhu Xinin's voice came, let me do it. He took a thin rubber hose, inserted it into the wall of the pipe, and lay down on the top of the pile, with the mouth to suck the water in the wall of the tube. However, the reaction build-up water running at full power is radioactive. Everyone at the scene was very quiet, only the sound of Zhu Xinyin absorbing water could be heard. Finally, the water was absorbed and the welding was successful. There are many such stories, and thousands of stories have the same ending. On December 26, 1970, China's first nuclear submarine was successfully launched. The 196 reactor on this nuclear submarine has also become the predecessor of the Huolong One. In fact, during the period from 1970 to 1990, China had mastered the core technology of Huolong One, that is, the construction principle and experimental process of the 196 reactor. It is almost one step away from completing the experimental work of the nuclear power plant, just because the shortage of funds. In 1988, Qian Jihui, who took over as the director of the Nuclear Power Institute, recalled this period and said, in the most difficult time, I described our old director Ren he is a beggar who begged for food with a stick. He has travelled all over China, leading a group of experts to seek investment from others. At that time, everyone was in the valley with meagre wages, but tour enthusiasm was still very high. The most common thing we said at that time was that we want to develop nuclear power. Later, the reason why the first phase project of Qinshan nuclear power plant could be completed in such a short period of time was that the technology of the nuclear submarine 196 reactor was basically followed. Hulong 1 originated from the 196 reactor, but the real maturity is in the second phase of the Qinshan nuclear power plant. Because before the start of this phase of the project, China has introduced more stringent nuclear safety requirements, which makes many people think that only the introduction of foreign technology can meet the standards. At that time, the countries with the most developed nuclear power in the world were the United States and France. The United States had Westinghouse AP600 and France had M310. However, China has independently developed a pulsed reactor. This technology has been monopolized since it was developed by General Atomics of the United States in 1957. So in 1991, when China developed it, the United States thought its technology had been stolen. China directly showed the photos of the equipment with unique craftsmanship to the Americans and persuaded the doubters on the spot. It is often said that Chinese technology is not as good as foreign technology, but they have never thought that since China's reform and opening up, China has not obtained any advanced foreign technology for free. Sometimes China even has to pay for huge and expensive orders, and the results are not as good as expected. Therefore, generations of nuclear power workers firmly believe that independent research and development is the fundamental way to completely get rid of foreign technology monopoly. Therefore, looking back on this history, I think the greatest contribution is this group of scientists, who are willing to take root in the impoverished mountainous areas and create an advanced new era. Okay. That's all for today. Please put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas with other people. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.